What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with What's next for Sean O'Malley after UFC 299 win? Sugar Sean O'Malley looks sensational in his first title defense against Marlon Chito Vera in the main event in Miami, Florida. He avenged his previous loss to the Ecuadorian over five rounds and defiantly announced afterwards, I'm guessing we can all agree that I'm undefeated still. When Joe Rogan inquired as to what the champ would like to do next, O'Malley responded by calling out new featherweight champion Ilya Topuria. Dana! Give me a jet to Spain, baby. I'm coming for Ilya Deporia. And if he doesn't want it, I'll... Nah, f*** it. I want Ilya, baby. Give me Ilya. In a post-fight press conference, Dana seemed to pour cold water on that idea. He expressed hesitation about fighters moving divisions and referenced the fact that Topuria had only just claimed the belt and needed to defend it. I, I don't know about moving divisions. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. You know how I feel about that. I mean, even Topuria was talking about not fighting anybody in the division after just winning the title. Yeah. That, that's crazy talk. The number one contender in the bantamweight division, Marab Devashvili, seems like the likely option if O'Malley does defend the 135-pound belt next. The machine is coming off an insanely impressive victory over former two-division champion Henry Cejudo and is on a 10-fight win streak in the UFC. Outside of Dubashvili, only Corey Sanhagen can stake a legitimate claim to the throne. Sandman is on a three-fight win streak but has struggled to capture the fans' imagination and, more importantly, Dana White's, with some less than entertaining displays. It's unlikely that the UFC would hold a pay-per-view headliner between two box office stars like O'Malley and Topuria in Europe, so Marab seems to be the likeliest next challenger. Next up, let's take a look at Michael Chandler sends a warning to Conor McGregor. Michael Chandler has vowed to take Conor McGregor's head off when they finally step into the octagon to face each other. More than a year has passed since the UFC announced that Chandler would be McGregor's next opponent, but we're still awaiting an official date for the bout to take place. McGregor announced on New Year's Eve that the fight is happening this June on International Fight Week, and Chandler also seems adamant that this is going to be the case. I understand everybody. They want to see me fight. They feel like I'm wasting my career and all these different things, but that's really just a to me a compliment because there's so many people that want to see me fight and now you're going to get to watch me fight connor this summer it's going to happen i believe june is going to happen and uh just stay tuned we got another we got 299 now 300 is going to be fun i'll be at 300 then you'll have 301 302 whatever they are and uh me and connor i'm gonna go out there and take his head off since the matchup was originally announced, the pair have coached opposite each other on the 31st season of the UFC's reality series, The Ultimate Fighter, but fans are still waiting for a date to be announced. When quizzed, Dana White has seemed reluctant to confirm any such date, and even hinted that we may not see McGregor return until the fall. It's coming up on three years since we last saw McGregor in competitive action, when he lost to Dustin Poirier, and Iron Mike has only been seen in the octagon once in the last two years, with both fighters seemingly crying out for the opportunity to fight each other Surely, we won't have to wait much longer to see them square off. Next up, let's take a look at Kevin Holland vs. Michael Page Recap Former Bellator standout and 10-time world kickboxing champion Michael Venom Page finally made his debut in the UFC when he faced off against number 13 ranked welterweight contender Kevin Holland. MVP paid tribute to The Undertaker during his walkout and wowed the fans with a creative striking display over three rounds. He toyed with Trailblazer for large portions of the fight and landed plenty of impactful blows from a variety of angles. Holland seemed to lack the wrestling acumen to really trouble Page and grew increasingly frustrated with his unorthodox movement. Even at 36 years old and 25 fights deep into his career, MVP looked electrifyingly fast. It was an impressive debut in the octagon by the Brit, and there are plenty of exciting possible matchups the UFC could hand him next. Stylistically, the likes of Steven Wonderboy Thompson and Michelle Pajeda would be tantalizing options, while there are also some very talented strikers around the top end of the welterweight rankings, such as Ian Machado Gary, Jack Della Maddalena, or Shavkat Rachmanov. Should the UFC be pushing MVP into the title picture? When quizzed at the post-fight press conference, Page was reluctant to call for a specific next opponent. Now, nah, like I said, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm just chasing the, the top of the hill. Whoever's there, you know, when it's time for me to to perform, that's that's the person I go for. For me, uh, I leave that to my, my coaches. We, we have enough stress in, uh, in the gym. Next up, let's take a look at what's next for Dustin Poirier after UFC 299 win. 
Dustin the Diamond Poirier stopped Benoit Saint Denis' surge through the UFC's lightweight division dead in its tracks with an impressive knockout victory in round two of their co main event fight. In a wildly entertaining bout, Poirier had to withstand some incredible pressure from the God of War before coming back and finishing the Frenchman with strikes midway through round two. BSD was on a five fight win streak coming into UFC 299, and Poirier was returning after a loss to Justin Gagey last July, with Poirier ranked nine places above his opponent in the UFC lightweight rankings. This was seen by some as a possible changing of the guard fight, an opportunity for Saint-Denis to steal Dustin's seat at the top end of the table. Poirier refused to give up under heavy pressure and came back to claim an impressive knockout victory. Afterwards, I, I took this fight because he finished his last of five opponents. He wasn't a name that the world really knows. He's on his way up, but he finished his last five opponents and he's dangerous. He, every win on his professional career, he's finished. And he has a never say die attitude. When I saw that and I watched some of his fights, he fought one of my friends. I said, you know what? I got to take this fight because I honor this game that we do. Eddie Alvarez gave me my shot in Dallas when he was a former champ and I was on my way up. So you got to pay it back. Hold your position or lose it, man. That's the nature of the beast. That's what we do. With Dustin having lost to the two fighters above him in the rankings, Justin Gagey and Charles Oliveira, it's difficult to see him leapfrog them into a title shot. Could we see him assume a gatekeeper role to the top five going forward in his career? Only time will tell. In other news, Sean Strickland goes off on UFC fighter pay. Former UFC middleweight champion Sean Strickland had zeroed in on the topic of fighter pay in one of his latest social media outbursts. Speaking about the upcoming movie Roadhouse, which stars Conor McGregor, Strickland said, Roadhouse 2 is the most accurate story ever. UFC fighter to broke bouncer, 90% of the current roster's future, lol. This ignited some conversation amongst his followers, and when one fan highlighted the disparity between the UFC's record-breaking profits and fighter compensation, he replied, Dana's too busy throwing watts of cash at the Nelk boys. Strickland seemed to bounce between chastising White and then backing the UFC president's position, responding with, LMAO, so true, here's 250k Nelk boys, would you like to get signed? How does 12 and 12 sound? Can't go a dollar more. This isn't the UFC or Dana's fault. We're grown men and we chose this path. It's just good to be open about how soul-sucking this sport is for most. It would seem Strickland is already beginning to feel the pinch after losing the 185-pound strap to Drakus Duplessis in January, and most likely losing out on the prospect of a champion's pay-per-view points after just a single title defense. And finally, let's look at Francis Ngannou breaks silence on Anthony Joshua fight. Francis Ngannou has opened up about his knockout defeat to Anthony Joshua in Saudi Arabia. The former UFC champion was dropped three times in the opening two rounds. The third concussive blow left him out cold on the canvas and needing medical attention. After seeing Ngannou run Tyson Fury close in his split decision loss last October, many expected to witness another competitive contest when the Predator stepped into the ring against Joshua this time around. Unfortunately for Ngannou, Joshua seemed to come into this bout at the top of his game and claimed an impressive knockout victory. Speaking at the post-fight press conference, Ngannou said, That was a clean one. So in fact, I didn't feel the punch. <laughs> I think that's what that's what the knockout is about. <laughs> I don't I don't feel any pain. <laughs> that's how I know I was knocked out. <laughs> Speaking about AJ's right hand, he said, "He was quite special because he stopped me. He did what Tyson Fury couldn't uh, Tyson, you know. couldn't, couldn't done. You know, he wasn't my day, and he was he's just way better than me today. So." Yeah, it sucks, but it's the game. We all know that. Game, it's the game. Tweeting to the fans later, he said, Sorry guys, I let you all down. Today was a bad day in the office, but tomorrow will be another day. Thank you all for the love. It'll be interesting to see what's next for Nganu. Joshua encouraged him to stick with boxing, while there is still a possibility that he returns to MMA and fights in the PFL Smart Cage. The MMA world goes off on Joe Rogan after his commentary work at UFC 299. They're calling Joe out for being biased during the Dustin Poirier vs. Benoit St. Denis fight. Here's what the MMA community had to say. From bad to worse for Dustin. Dustin is exhausted. Shut the F up. Not a clue. Joe's always had a problem exaggerating how tired guys are. Like, Dustin was tired, but not that tired. Give it a rest. Terrible commentary by Joe Rogan, and Daniel Cormier didn't give any props to Dustin Poirier until he won. Joe Rogan was on Saint Denis nuts. LOL. Congratulations, he sounds like I've been watching MMA for 10 years and he sounds terrible and shouldn't be getting the job over the hundreds of people who deserve it more. I don't care if he's been with the UFC from the beginning. Him being trained is irrelevant. 
Once again, Joe Rogan needs to retire from UFC commentary immediately. The more I watch UFC events, the more I hate Joe Rogan on commentary. Joe Rogan has become the worst commentator the UFC has. I look forward to pay-per-views that are done outside the USA, so I don't have to hear him ruin the experience. Next, we have Islam Makachev vs Dustin Poirier next. After Dustin's big knockout win at UFC 299, Ali Abdelaziz, who's Islam Makachev's manager, tweeted, Dustin Poirier took a huge risk tonight and came out on top and looked amazing. Dustin vs Islam in June, especially since everyone else has fights, if the UFC is good with this, then Islam would be game. This lines up with Islam's claims earlier this month saying he wants to fight in June. With Justin Gaethje and Charles Oliveira fighting on UFC 300 in April, Islam Makachev doesn't have many options. It looks like we might end up getting Islam vs Dustin in June. Top comments. Not enough output, no combinations, too much shelling up, and way too much flinching. Yeah, Cheeto is tough, but that don't cut it at the elite level. MVP vs Wonderboy needs to happen. Sugar did a master class, he's evolving every fight. Alexander Volkanovsky saying, now that's experience, is so hilarious. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.